Egypt's tourism minister announced this week that his country was aiming to increase tourism by 20% this year. Indeed, the fortunes of the tourist industry will be a hot topic in the forthcoming parliamentary elections, it being Egypt's biggest earner of hard currency. But with continuing unrest in the country, of course, and a well-publicized attack in recent days in which 27 Islamic militants were killed in Sinai, just how realistic is it to expect a substantial rise in visitors? Well, with me now is Victoria Mackay, who's a business intelligence and risk consultant um, specializing in Egypt. It's going to be very difficult for them to recover, surely. Extremely difficult. I mean, the fall um, in tourism has been really significant since the revolution um, back in 2011. Um, at, at that time, prior to the revolution, Egypt had almost 15 million visitors every year. Um, and that's fallen round about, to numbers around about 9 million today. And the recent upsurge in um, uh, Islamic-linked um, terrorism in the country is really not going to do anything to improve is that, the situation. Is that people being scared, or is it embassies saying, you know, we advise you not to go and, and visit there because the situation is so volatile? Well, the embassies, I mean, they're, they're in a difficult position, but uh, so far as I can tell, their, their response has been very measured to date. For example, um, the British Foreign Office um, is recommending against, strongly against travel to Sinai, with the exception of the popular Sharm el Sheikh tourist destination at the southern tip of Sinai, which the mm. Foreign Office is saying is still safe to travel to. It's isolated, it's well guarded, mm. and so far there haven't been any t uh, attacks. Um, so I think that the embassies are taking a, a measured approach. Um, the problem is, of course, that, that these um, jihadi campaigns are actually intended to scare off tourists and to mm. scare off foreign investment with a view to undermining the economy and ultimately destabilizing the government. I know, I mean, some friends, I, I know uh, uh, you may well have them yourself, who are still going to Egypt mm. I mean, because of the, the resorts are not near uh, the trouble spots as such. Mm -hmm. But. Um, you were telling me the figure a bit earlier, uh, the, the number of millions uh, it has reduced by. What mm. is that? Is it like nine million over a period down, of two or three years? That's right, down close to nine million. And of course, we've got to remember that, that prior to the revolution in 2011, tourism um, comprised nearly 13 percent of mm. Egypt's GDP. So the effect on the economy has been significant. Tourism employed, directly employed, one in seven workers across mm. Egypt. So the, the impact on the economy can't be underestimated. And the economy will continue, I think, in the medium and long term to be mm. the, the, the defining factor which um, determines whether or not um, people are going to come back out on the streets mm. en masse um, with potential for another uprising. I also know some people, uh, I've been speaking to um, ladies uh, who have gone to Cairo and mm. to well, various other places as well, but there's a situation there where often uh, women can be mistreated by uh, the, the local men, the indigenous men there, mm. uh, and this is not a good thing. This is going, it's getting worse, in fact. It is getting worse. It's been getting worse since the revolution, um, and it's something. It's important to note that it's it's not uh, it's not specifically attacks on Western women. Um, it's it's actually uh, sexual attacks on all women, including local women. Some of the worst attacks were actually in large public squares in Tahrir Square, where yeah. everybody gathered, of course, for the revolution. Um, local women were attacked during Eid last year in a particularly savage manner. But it's important to note as well that the, the CC government is taking steps to try to combat that. It's recognized it as a problem, as a priority. Mm. And a number, um, a number of the perpetrators linked to those attacks during Eid last year were actually kind of hurried through the court system in quite an uncharacteristic fashion. There's off, there are often long backlogs in of Egypt course. and given very hefty penalties to send a signal that, that won't be accepted by the government. But nevertheless, it continues to be a problem. What would you say to me tonight if I said, yes, I, I, I want to go to Cairo. I, I want to visit mm. the, the pyramids. Would you advise uh, me to go? Or? Well, um, I, I happen to think that at the moment, um, Egypt is, is suffering um, a, a particular um, upsurge in um, attacks in Cairo, but more specifically in Sinai. Um, the question is whether this will continue um, into a longer running campaign. Um, or whether it will, you know, th there's, a, there's a limited capacity um, and, and that this is a particular moment. Of course, attacks, an increase in attacks was expected around about now, mm. around about the 25th of January anniversary of the revolution, leading up to the 11th of February uh, fall of Mubarak. And of course, a lot of these attacks are designed to deter foreign investors ahead of the March um, investment conference mm. and the parliamentary elections, of course, which are scheduled between the end of March um, and May. All right. Fascinating stuff. Okay, Victoria Mackay, thank you very much thank indeed you. for coming in to see us tonight.